scare you, but uh, today we'll be talking about something else, something very important, something that we all have to, we all deal with daily. I'm talking about um, safety on our roads and driving ethics. Now, whether you're a pedestrian, you are a driver, you are a biker, whatever you are, and you plied, you use the road, this program is important. Let's just say it is um, our Road Safety Lessons 101. Yeah, there will be so many reminders here and uh, so many things for us to talk about. But for us to start this discussion, and by the way, you can actually send in your messages, sending your messages on our phone lines, which will be on your screen shortly, sending your phone, your questions, contributions. Tell us what are those um, road offenses? What are those road attitudes, road behaviors that you see other road users do that actually offend you a lot? I, for one, what offends me really is that I'm just driving. There's someone is this is driving on both lanes. You know the the broken markings on the road. He's driving in the middle. He's neither here nor there. And suddenly he comes this way. And road safety has told us you have to overtake by your left. And I'm warning this guy move out of my lane. Then I have to go uh, overtake by the. All right, hoping that road safety don't catch me and I'm in trouble. Anyhow, we'll be discussing our Road Lessons 101 on the program today. Road safety and driving ethics is our topic for today on the Medley Show. All right, keep your contributions coming in. Once again, my name is Simply Cecil. All right, first of all, we went on the street and we sought uh, your thoughts, your opinions on if you know how much you know about road signs and road signages and um, on the road. So these are our findings. I know my road signs. I know bombs. I know uh, weights. I also know stop. Yes, I know my road signs. I know bomb, I know stop, I know you U-turn, I know danger, I know stop, and also I know men at work, like diversion. I know my road signs as a driver. There are some that they used to put in stuff. We have bending color. We have uh, no the the one that they will put red, that's don't, don't cross. We have another one that uh, is on the this thing, traffic. Especially traffic, uh, traffic light. When you see green, you can go. If you see yellow, ready to go. If you see red, you have to stop. And uh, in uh, in the case of driving, if you are driving on a highway, when you want to do overtaking, you will put traffic gator. Then study the car that is at the, uh, on your front and the one behind you before you enter overtaking and you cannot overtake in the bending corner. Those ones that help in driving, they can reduce uh, the rate of accidents on the road. So of course, I, I've been driving for more than 12 years right now, and I know most of the road signs. Wherever we are approaching a place where there's a bridge, you know, there's a road sign that shows that vehicle should slow down. Then if there's a vehicle that has a breakdown on the road, there's a sea cushion placed on the road, I make sure I observe most of these traffic signs and the vehicle before me, I make sure I observe their traffication so that it will be able to give me an insight of where I'm going. Then secondly, when you are whenever I'm trying to negotiate a corner, I make sure I look forward, left and right, to ensure that there is a very good clearance before I begin to enter my drive so that I can, be, I, I can avoid so many accidents. I know my road signs, everything. Some people will see give way, then go, they, they, they go just jump inside, like that. It's not, it's not, a, it's not, a, it's not a, sometimes if, I, if I'm moving, I'm, I'm watching all of them. It's dangerous driving. Once you see it give way, you don't have to jump inside like that. You go give way to the person where they come, where they where get road. But you, you where they enter, you didn't have right to enter there. to know that well to an extent we know our road signages and uh, but 
We still wonder why we record quite a number of abuse of these signages. Like, uh, anyhow, we are going to get to talk about this. I told you earlier, you can send in your contributions. Tell us what are those um, road offences that you see other road users, whether it's pedestrian, do on the road that actually offend you. I've told you one, of, um, I've actually told you mine. Maybe as we get to talk, we'll get to know much more of this. Anyhow, to talk about these and more, I have. Oga driver, he has, well, he's been, we've been working together for many years here in the NTA. I'm talking about the Assistant Corps Marshal of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Jonas Agu. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. All right, Oga Jonas, like we call him, is the Zonal Commanding Officer, Zone 7. Zone 7 covers the FCT and Niger State. Uh, yes, and uh, he's also worked in several other places. Remind us where you've worked. I know you've worked in Lagos. I worked in Lagos. I worked here in Abuja, of course. Okay. I also worked in Joss two times and then worked in Port Harcourt. I worked, um, I can go on and on. Okay. Now, th th this is good because um, this program is national, so everybody's watching us from all over the country. So maybe when they talk about um, their city, so you can you able to relate. Because I know the traffic situation in Lagos may be a little different with somewhere like Abuja. Okay. Now, let us have that as the basis of our discussion. Yeah. Abuja, we know, have good roads, you know, uh, yeah, just uh, Lagos, for instance. Yeah, they may have good roads in some place, but it's a little more choked up city. How is traffic in a city like Abuja and Lagos? Well, uh, of course, you know that uh, we are told on a daily basis that Lagos is the commercial nerve center of the country. Mm. So for some people to tell you Lagos is Nigeria's New York. Yeah. Heavy traffic, um, busy people. And then if you contrast the heavy traffic with Abuja, although today Abuja traffic is gradually trying to compete with Lagos. I know. Gradually. Right. It's those Lagosians that are coming here. Well, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Lagosians. Those of us who grew up in Lagos, we came to Abuja, we became tamed. I know. You know, but relatively, if you compare in terms of traffic volume, is heavier in Lagos because mm. of, you know, the, the road network. Abuja, like you said, good roads, bad driving behavior. Ah. Good roads, bad driving behavior in Abuja. Fewer vehicles compared to Lagos, but I'll tell you the driving behavior in Abuja mm. competes well with Lagos. And I'll, I'll tell you this funny story. Okay. Oh, 2016, I was in Port Harcourt. Haven't grown up in Lagos. I've been schooled in Lagos. Mm. I came into Abuja and I thought, these were angels driving in Abuja because <laughs> then Abuja was the city, <laughs> right? You could park your vehicle, walk away, come back, you see it. If someone scratches you, you say, oh, I'm sorry. That was then. Okay. So with that mindset, I went to Port Harcourt and I saw the driving. Mm. Whatever you hear about Lagos is nothing compared to driving in rivers. Port Harcourt. Are you serious? Port Harcourt driving. The guy can start reversing from anywhere. I mean, <laughs> from the roundabout. I'm talking about anywhere. <laughs> Anything is possible. If it's been tamed right now, I would doubt that because the driving habits are not getting better on a daily basis. It was fun to hear people say, I know my road signs. Mm. Knowledge of the science is not just all what we need. We need the knowledge and application of the science. Mm. Now, if you were to break it down to ask people, and I've done this severally, go to teach people how to drive. In a hall of about 100 people, you ask them, what's the speed limit in Nigeria? They tell you we know. Okay. That one, I have to hold you. Okay, continue. I'll have to hold you responsible. No, I'm, I'm just saying. Okay. And then you now ask them, how many of you as Christians and Muslims before God that you serve and man, mm. drive by that speed. Out of that 100, you won't get 15. Mm. So it's not about we know the signs. The issue now is do you apply those signs? Do you obey those signs? The reasons why we record crashes on a daily basis on Nigerian road, wherever it is, whether it's Lagos, yeah. it's Abuja, Port Harcourt, or the Southeast, is simply mm. because we do not pay heed to what the signs are. Okay. Um, now, talking about um, accidents now, I know accidents on our road before 
I know you, uh, the year passed, I uh, said the figures were really high, and yeah. I don't know, we want to run through some of the figures. Are they really bad, first of all? <laughs> okay, all right, so let's hear this. Uh, I'll tell you they are bad. Oh my God. They are bad. Okay. Um, in, in Abuja for 2020, mm. we recorded 1,048 crashes. Out of that number, we lost 248. Wow. In Niger, there were fewer crashes. 303, and we lost almost the same number of lives, over 200 lives. Now, if you look at the road network in Abuja compared to Niger, if you look at the traffic volume in Abuja oh. compared to Niger, you'll be wondering why Niger will record fewer crashes, crashes. yet the number of deaths are almost um, at par with what happens here in Abuja. They don't have good roads like us. Well, well, it's the same bad driving behavior. Mm. I mean, we will call it irresponsible driving behavior. That's, that's the reason. It's not about, like some would say, oh, fix the roads, and government, I must give it to government. They are doing their best to try to fix the roads in the confine of what we have in terms of funding. Mm. But the concern is not whether the roads are good and bad. Yeah. Abuja roads are good, yet we don't obey the rules. The roads in Niger, they are not as good as Abuja. Yet people are overloading. We are carrying human beings and carrying camels and carrying cows and cattle and whatever, whatever, you know, in mm. this truck. Yeah. So, so in Niger, I recall there was a crash that happened in Niger in December. We lost 23 people in one crash. Wow. One crash, you know. So, so it's not about how good or bad the state of the road is. It's about how responsible we are on the road when we drive. Okay. Um, well, we'll go and take something now. I want to know, many of us, some people while driving, you don't want to, you're not so tall. Like I me, think, like me. Yes, like yes. us. Julius, Agu and myself, we're just competing. <laughs> okay. My brother no, Julius. We know, mm. we're supposed to move our chair forward. You, so that our leg can touch. Use pillow, support yourself. My point exactly. Yes. But no, mm -hmm. so that people will not laugh at me because someone <laughs> will tell me that, Jesse, you are just driving like this. So, because I want to form big gear now, I'll take my, then my leg will hardly touch. <laughs> the, all right, so anyhow, there are so many things we need to learn about uh, driving. Uh, how do you place your hands while driving? I know there are some people who are very comfortable with just cruising with one hand. I don't know if you've seen them on the road. Yeah, plenty of them. Plenty of them, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it's an offense. Then mm. there are so many things we need to know about driving. And so that when accidents happen, if accidents happen, which we pray it doesn't, so that it wouldn't affect you so much. Of course, you say airbag, yeah, we have airbag. But you need to know proper driving position. So anyway, I stumbled into this material online in the Federal Road Safety website, and I thought, okay, we could learn something from this. So let's see proper sitting position while you are driving on the wheel. Number one, you're sitting distance from the dashboard. The distance. Sorry. It's um, okay, Jonas. Yes. What would you want to add to that? And most of what is said are they actually true? I mean, with our Nigerian roads, maybe they're, they're, they're very perfect. The only time I just smiled a bit was when you talked about adjusting your steering, and I was just reflecting on the kind of vehicles we have on our roads that you know that their steering can move. His assumption, and, and let me dwell on this subject. Okay. Because every time we talk road safety in Nigeria, what we don't remember is that we are talking state of the road. Yes. State of the vehicle. Mm. We are talking driver behavior. Yes. When the man in the developed climb talks road safety, he's talking driver behavior. Okay. The state of the road is a given because there's a standard that the road must always be maintained up to. Mm. You are not dealing with inadequate road furniture on the road. You're not talking about road signs you say maybe are not visible or don't meet. There's a standard, global standard. Mm. Now, when I laughed over the issue of the steering positioning and I smiled, mm. it's because the man thinks that vehicles in Nigeria all, have. all meet that standard, right? Because if the vehicle don't meet the minimum safety standard, that vehicle can be on the road. So what we mixed up is we forget that over here, 
you worry about your vehicle state, mm. you worry about driver competence, driver attitude, driver knowledge, compliance with the rule, mm. you worry also about the state of the road. And so that simply means that while the white man or the man in a developed climb would worry a little, mm. our worry should be this huge. Mm. Because you're dealing with every of the legs on which road safety stands. The road, the vehicle, and driver and driver behavior. Okay. That's my take. But then let me also make this. Okay. You were talking about big girls, and I want to say that <laughs> we've gone to rescue scenes. Okay. I see a girl that probably got into the vehicle feeling like she was a Miss Abuja. I see. At that scene, she does not care about the hairdo that has fallen off, mm. the torn dresses, she does not care. So what we're saying is your big girl only become important when you're alive. True. So when some people would feel that, let them not know that I use some support so to raise myself up. You're doing yourself. Then secondly, have you noticed those who practically embrace the steering? Okay, that's still bad. They get so close to the steering as if if their chest is not this close to the steering, <laughs> then the driving Seriously, is not good enough. Seriously, are there people like that? Like, there are people like that. Like so close. No, they get so close. Is it close. possible they have eye problems? No, no, it can't be high problem. Because, because you're being close to the steering does not even improve your vision. Vision doesn't improve it. Uh. It's a wrong position that God forbid. In look at the closeness between you and and some of people sometimes don't have their seatbelt on. Mm. But let me now end it here. When you place your confidence on what the airbag would do to you or what the seatbelt to do to you. Remember that the airbag and the seatbelt becomes very functional and effective because you drive by the rule. Mm. You can't drive at 170 kilometers per hour and mm. boast and say my vehicle has, and I'll tell you there was a very funny crash that happened in FCT some years back when I was still a little bit younger. In that crash, there were about, how many of them? Six of them, they all died on the spot. They crashed onto a broken down truck in the night. They had done several things wrong. One, they were coming from a mami market, so they had taken oh. a little bit of alcohol. There were six of them in the vehicle. And of course, because of the impact of the crash, the airbag came on, but the airbag and the seat belt couldn't save them because when you break every of the rule, it's like, let me sound like a pastor now. He says when you break the urge, Mm. The serpent will bite you. Okay. You don't break the edge and say, this snake, blood of Jesus, you're not going to bite me. So we are saying, you can't be driving under the influence, seatbelt you didn't use, you're using your phone and driving, and you're saying, I have airbags in this vehicle. When it happens, they combine airbags and seatbelt will protect me from a crash. No, you might lose your life in that process, mm. and if you don't, you probably would tell God, why did you allow me to leave? You become a vegetable. So please learn to comply with all the rules. Okay, well, I, it's going to be, <laughs> well, you wish to comply by the rules. Now, I'll, I'll take some messages very quickly. And uh, this person says, uh, my name is Arizona. Arizona from Enugu. I like the, I yeah, like the Arizona way you guys... Should, Arizona should be from Arizona. Arizona should be from Arizona, <laughs> but this Arizona is from Enugu. <laughs> All right, so it says, uh, I like the way you guys are discussing the matter. Thank you. All right, uh, let's quickly go on to our WhatsApp line. On our WhatsApp line, we have so many of you calling. Please don't call. Um, someone that says, uh, please, I would like to know... I would like... Oh, people just keep calling when I say don't call. All right, um, I want to know what I don't like on the road because I'm a road user is placing political campaign posters on road signages. Mm. All right, he also wants to know what's the difference between the white broken line and the other one that is not broken on the road. Also, I'd like to know about uh, there is this uh, parking where, where vehicles can park on the road. I mean, how do we? So many questions. Okay, let us start. I, I, hope, right. I, survive. Okay. I hope I survive this program today. Uh, yes, you will survive the program. Sassy won't let me even have a breather. I said, look, look, when you're driving on the okay. road, when you're driving, is it number one, let me make an appeal to our, our viewers. Okay. That 
we spoke about foundation yes. being very important. The foundation here is if you never went to any of the certified driving schools, then I appeal to you to please do. Mm. Driving is not a joke. That vehicle that you are posing with can very well end your life. Mm. So if you did the type that some people did behind one school in Gariki, or behind one school somewhere in Oweri or in, in Bariga, in Elijah, if you did that, I would appeal to you, go back to a driving school. It's not posing because someday your driving skills will be called to question. It will take a split second. And if you don't do the right thing, you may not be alive to explain it. So that is the foundation because if you have that foundation, it will teach you every other thing before you are now taught how to move the vehicle, which is why most of our people on the road are vehicle movers, not drivers. Okay, Uncle Jonas, what about... <laughs> Uncle Jonas. Now, what about uh, in the case where my brother has been driving since 1364. He is very good on yeah, the road. Yeah. So he can be my driving teacher. Why do I need to go to a driving school? I mean, there are many people who have issues like questions like that. Let, let, let me tell you this. I thank God he didn't allow me to become a medical doctor. Okay. I'm not too sure that I can stand the sight of blood or a human. Because the man who ends up as a doctor doesn't just learn about the human autonomy. Am I right? He goes through learning. They will say, let's go through theory. Mm. Your brother learned how to move a vehicle. Mm. Check most of the time the uncles and aunties and daddies who will take you through the driving lessons. All they do is, Cecil, he said, Daddy, stay like this. Yes. Here is your turtle. Yes. Here is your brake. Okay. Here is your accelerator. Okay. Now, just be confident. Eh? Okay. Don't be afraid. Okay. The damn food that will pass in Lagos or all these Okada people in Abuja, yes. when you start the vehicle, okay. just stay and keep your eye. Like this. That is all he's going to take you through. Okay, then I'll just accelerate that or brake. So, okay. after a couple of days, if you are like the kind of me, mm. You have, like they would say, the man has strong heart too. Mm. You know the fear. They say, Muku, enter express. Mm. After day one. All he's going to teach you is how to drive that vehicle from the studio in area 11 here to ShopRite. Mm. He's not going to tell you and say to you, in the event of this, don't do this. Okay. But now, and that's the difference between uncle taught me how to drive. Drive. And the driving school man who, when you register day one, starting point is sit in the class. He takes you through all the gamut of safety. Mm. Causes of driving. You talked about defensive driving. Yes. He takes you through all of those things, road signs and blah, blah, blah. When he is sure that you have grabbed all the nitty gritties of driving. Yes. He now says, let's go practice what I taught you in class inside vehicle A. Okay. You now get in there so at every other point where you now see a road sign that says no U-turn. Mm. You remember that he showed me this sign in the classroom. Yeah. But now if he didn't do that, if he had done you uncle teach me, you're just moving the vehicle. Yeah, my uncle will teach me that even if I see the sign. He just even if I don't moving. see a vehicle coming, I should just quickly it, run. Well, that's what somebody <laughs> told me. We stopped the guy at the traffic light point. Okay. Pulled him over. Yes. I said, okay, why you jump traffic light? He said, I look left, I look right. No motor didn't pass. Exactly. And he did right. I move. The man was candid. So what we did was, we quietly drove him to the studio for a guy driver. We said, tell Abuja people how you drive. And he said, he enter road, see traffic light. He showed red. Nobody, they come left. Nobody come right. Only the end. So he moved. <laughs> and that's what uncle would teach you. Because your uncle is not a trained instructor. He's not a competent instructor to teach you how mm. to drive. Yes. So most times people do that. Some call it shortcut. We like shortcut a lot. Okay. Right? Mm. Shortcut. Mm. They say, let me go and do 26 days in driving school. I don't get that time. I'll pay money yeah. and wait for road safety. I beg. I beg. That's your other car. Let me just yeah. use it now. Exactly. And after two days, he tell you, Sassy, let me just go and buy something that we'll eat. Yeah. So we are saying, no, that is wrong. Because mm. even when you do that and you come for a driver's license, we'll tell you, 
you do not qualify to pick up a driver's license. All right, let's take quickly some messages and then we'll go on. No, to... hold on. Okay. You asked the question. All right. You asked about the solid marks and the broken marks. The broken marks. marks, yes. The solid mark tells you keep going, no overturning, no U-turn, no overtaking, nothing. Just keep going. It means that's the legal right that tells you you can't do anything here. Mm. The broken mark says to you that you can overtake. Mm. Now, you know why it is good to know these signs? Mm. You, you, you may lose your life at the point, and it will happen because, and I'll give you this case. If you know Abuja too well, yeah. driving from Jabi, life camp, Jabi, life camp, heading towards SciTech. Yes. You have the solid marks. Yes. In the middle, and it tells you that if you are driving towards the Judicial um, Institute, all he's saying to you is that you cannot turn into King's Court Estate. Yes. If you are coming from Jabi, it means you must drive up to as if you are getting to Galadima Waranabar to make a proper turn because the road markings there will have said, because it is broken, you can now make a U turn. Ah. U turn. Now, there was a case. Okay. Happened at about 6.37. The fellow was driving towards King's Court. The solid mark was double. The double solid mark demands oh. you, tells you, don't. And the fellow, because we like shortcut, slowed down there, stop, was waiting for vehicles coming from, uh, what's it called now, the EFCC, the do railway site, coming towards Life Camp to stop before they move. Behind this vehicle was a luxury bus. Loaded was doing night journey. That we keep saying to Nigerians, don't do night journey. Mm. And the man smashed that vehicle. The man I went to court. The magistrate came to me and said, Jonas, what do we do? We got there. I said, study the road markings. By then, the owner of the bus, being a businessman and knowing fully that he was losing money, said to the guy, look, let me pay you some money. Keeping my vehicle at the police station, I'm losing profit. That one said, no, no, we'll go to God. We'll sort this matter out. And I said, okay. By the time we were done, and I said to the judge, the marking showed clearly that that boss did nothing wrong. Mm. This man that stopped waiting for traffic to ease before turning into King's Court was wrong because coming from Jabi Life Camp, you can't make a turn to your left. Mm. It's the same thing if you're coming from, say you're coming from airport and you're heading after a do railway junction, after um, King's Court, and you want to turn into, um, what's it called now, SciTech. SciTech, yeah. You can only drive up to the junction where there's an appropriate U-turn, turn, come back before you get in. Okay. So I'm saying these are the lessons you will learn only because you are in the class in a driving school and it is the responsibility of that instructor to take you through what the rule says before he puts you in the vehicle. Mm. So when most of us just learn and say, oh, but I beg, nobody driving, some will say, nobody even taught me. I just took the vehicle myself yes, after sir. one hour. Uh, but some people, they end up a mortuary. Exactly. <laughs> because of that. Because of that. I will know what made they enter mortuary. My point exactly. Good. Now there's so much, so much of questions. Please, do send in messages on our phone line. Not calls. I keep seeing your calls, and your calls don't make me take your messages. All right. Um, good afternoon. I'm Chuku Dubem from Anam Anambra State. I suggest that we should obey the road signs, like putting on the seat belts, and I really like this program. Thank you. All right. My name is Joy Priest. Thank, uh, texting from Kano State. Nice teaching. Thank you very much. That's for you. Okay. All right. Um, just want to say hello. Good afternoon. Please write where you're coming from. Uh, please, I would like to see the video again. Well, you watch your repeat of the program on Sunday by 3 p.m. Uh, this, this other person is asking, there are different road signs on the road, but we, the masses, don't abide by it. Everyone is in the haste to move first, which often leads to various accidents. We should learn to abide strictly to road signs, avoid overspeeding, answering of calls, eating while driving. Also, the pedestrian should walk on the right Road. That's pedestrian. That, that, also... That's my friend. I love that person's yes, contribution. Yes, uh, uh, this person's yeah. contribution is also very important. Yeah. Uh, all right. I had a chat with uh, the call Marshal, Bobo Yoyoyemi, mm. 
and he enumerated some of the road, uh, uh, some of the road traffic offenses, and there are something you talk about points, penalty points. Penalty points. Yeah, yeah. we never really. Uh, I guess many people don't know that their points are actually piling up. Yeah. So anyhow, here is an interview I had with uh, the call marshal Bobo Oyeyemi. He spoke about um, the penalty, the penalty points, and the offenses. Let's have a listen, and we'll get back to it. We have never gone against use of Google Map, but the rule is this, you must hang it. You don't hold Google Map like this and be driving to one and One, that is dangerous driving. Two, that is use of phone while driving. The law is very clear. It's not only use, making calls. The law says use of phone while driving. That means holding the phone and you say, you are not making call, but you are, no. In developed countries, you hang your phone and you are driving. You cannot be, you, somebody said, I put it on my tie, and using the Google map, I said, you are wrong. Okay, you look down and you are driving. That fraction of a second, there's probability that the vehicle has crossed your way, or you are too close to the vehicle, and you ram into him, it can lead into, a, the resultant effect can lead to a fatal crash. Mm -hmm. But if it's displayed, you hang it, and you are driving, you are just listening to the direction. Next 100 meters, turn right turn left, make a U-turn, mm -hmm. you have got into Fort Avenue, stop. That is it, you are listening. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to hold it and be driving with one hand. Driving with one hand is defense, is dangerous driving. I will give you a citation for 50,000. That's 10 points deducted from your man. Because we have started enforcing the penalty point system now. So we must get it clear. Google Map is allowed, but you must display, hang it, there are devices you can use to hang it on your dashboard. All right, um, that's uh, the call, Marshall of the Federal Road Safety Corps. Boy, we're talking about Google Map. Maybe later we'll take the one on the point. The penalty point. The penalty point. And yeah. that penalty point is very important. I was surprised to know that the penalties are almost at 50, so, like so many. Yeah, many. Here we're thinking, it was, if it's just a license, your papers, uh, that's yeah, it. There are plenty of penalties. Driving under the influence is there. You mentioned papers, driving without a driver's license, driving with a defaced driver's license. Um, you're running the red light. Um, is it, does it actually work in Nigeria? Which one? All these things you're talking about. I mean, do we actually get points? You get points. Whoops. All right. We, we you, let, you <laughs> let's talk points later. Let's talk about what he just talked about. Yeah. Um, Google. Driving with Google, Google Map, map. Um, yeah. or your phone. I mean, uh, the phone yeah. is just here now. Just look at it quickly. It, now. I'll not look up. You know, I, I'll tell you what my, before I talk about Google, but I have one man I call Big Boss, Uncle Tony. Okay. Tony would say to you, Jonas, you're worrying about uh, being distracted by the mobile phone. He said, don't worry. Before you start that car, just turn that phone off. Switch it off. Mm. You want to avoid... Because if you, if, if Celsius were to be my wife now, mm. and I'm driving and I see you call me constantly, my mind will be that I hope there's no emergency. I'll pick it. Yeah. Right? So Uncle Tony says, don't even switch them off. So when my boss talked about Google, somebody asked me like and said, you mean we cannot use Google? We didn't say don't use Google. Mm. We only said if you're on the road driving, the rule says use a phone while driving. And I need to break that down. Ladies who wants to be driving and maybe it's the Boru Post car, yeah. right? I just feel like before the owner gets the car, let me just snap while yeah, I'm driving. Selfie. Yeah, on the wheels. I know. And then the ones who are driving and the Snapchats, reading emails, sending messages, and he's just saying, Every of the tools in that phone, do not use it. Can you do your Google without your phone? You must use your phone. Mm. And you heard what he said. Have a phone holder, right? Mm. Have it strapped there. So while you're driving, and what I do is set it before you take off. And like he said, listen. You, yeah. I mean, you can listen. It's telling yeah, you You're already. listening. It's telling you um, five kilometers yeah. from here, turn right. Exactly. Blah, 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 turn right. But now you are doing, look at the offenses you are committing. First, you are driving with one hand, mm -hmm. which is wrong. Now, the Yorubas will call it the Talantolo approach. The what? Talantolo. Talantolo approach. The man that has one leg, one bad leg, is called, <laughs> yes, that's the Yoruba. Okay. That man would never have a good balance. If there was a fight, hold a good leg, he's now. 
At the point you are using one hand on the steering, you are equivalent to a talentolo person. Oh, talentolo, yeah. Because in the event of a crash, before you could muster courage to grab your... What did that man say when he was talking about sitting position? He said two hands on your steering. Yeah. So by using one hand, offense number one. Number two is that you have the phone on the other hand. And then your concentration is not on the road, but you are looking at... And where, where is the place? Which side is the place and all the stuff? So what we said to you, do not expose your life and the life of other people in the name that you are trying to locate the address of somewhere. We're saying no. Have a phone holder. Let it be clipped there. As he's telling you, you're listening. He says, go right, you go right. Go left, you go. You get to the place, do your business. You come back, you're safe. Your car is in order, you're in order. Every other person is in order. That's been our position, and that's what the law says. All right, um, more messages. I really This is jo Joseph from me, and I really appreciate you people for a wonderful topic today. I will advise my beloved brothers and sisters who have, been, who have the mind to drive to go through, through driving school because driving is not all about moving a car Thank but you. having the experience of what driver what a driver is and all the road signs. Thank mm. you very much. That's someone you really like. Yeah. All right. Uh, good. Oh, this is a long one. Good afternoon, sir. I live in Abuja. Um, I'm Okonu. I have an observation about road safety in Abuja. Most of the public transport, especially cabs, overload. Okay, he's talking about overload. No so we'll take overload also. Um, this one, I'm Josh from Lekki. I'm really enjoying the program. Please, I'd like to know more about give about giveaway sign on the road. Giveaway. Okay, uh, you talk about that. It's, all right. I I am Joyce Eze from Lagos. About a meter, please. How can we avoid a risky driver for both the young and old ones? Thanks. The and the proper age for driving car. Kids below 17 nowadays are uh, since... No, the, if you're not 18, you can't drive. Someone asked me this question in church. Mm. And said, my daughter is 16. I said, no. I said, you know what? It's risky for you to train a 16-year-old child to, on how to drive. Mm. It's more like telling a boy who is five and said, this is a gun. It's loaded. If you do like this... Someday he will try to experiment. Mm. And I said to my friend, when your daughter is 17 years, six months, right? Almost 18, because if you, if you drive under 18, that's underage driving. Yeah. So you must be 18 for you. Just like they said to you, if you're not 18, you can't, you can't vote. Drink, yeah. yeah, so at 18, let's assume you're now a grown-up boy, grown-up girl, you're a grown-up man, grown-up lady, you can learn how to drive. But I tell people, I said, it's risky to say because I love Junior. At 13, let him go and learn how to drive. Sure. I've had one or two occasions where I will tell you sincerely, when I was sector commander at FCT, I went after the boy. Then I was staying in Kadora State, was going home to pick up some item, saw this boy who was 13 driving, I went after him. Wow. And when I got him, took him to my office, the whole estate was on Jonah Asago, including my wife. Okay. They came to do what we Nigerians do, sentiments. Eh, okay? yeah. You hey, know no. we live on the same I street, know. the same church, we're in the same mosque. If only you can, I told my wife, never you step into matters that bothers on safety. Don't whip up sentiment. Because if you don't correct it today, the mother might lose the son. At this time, come Michelle, Jonas, I, go, I know you have so much to say. And you say, Sesu brought you in. And you came in saying that, oh, how was uh, it? Oga that? Koka, it is, it is <laughs> Sesu that dragged me here. Oga, it is not me that dragged you here. The people <laughs> want to see him here. All right, so let's go see the, the uh, feature I called on earlier where uh, Koma Shabobo, you and me talked about the points and the penalty. And we'll be back. Yeah. Globally, you accumulate points for any, every traffic offense, ranging from two points to three points to five points to ten points. So in Nigerian system, if you accumulate between 10 and 14 points, you get a warning. And you go for five hours driver's education. Then if you accumulate 15 points, then your license is suspended for three months and you go back to driving school. Then if you accumulate 21 points, your license is canceled, is suspended for one year. Then you go back to driving school full for driver's retraining. By the time this, everybody gets to doing about this, people will drive well. Because you commit this offense, 
your, your points will, will, it will trigger. And when I give you citation, if it's because people don't look underneath it, they will see the number of points being, uh, that is accumulating. So by the time you accumulate 10 to 13, 14 points, you get a warning. You must do five hours driver's education, not at a goal, maybe one hour every day for five days in a driving school. All right, so you get uh, what I talked about. Um, the penalty The penalties point. and points. Yeah. Yes, you try to enumerate it. Can you touch on it very briefly? Some of the offenses. Yes, I mean, he mentioned that points accumulate. Yeah. So it, is it any time they stop me, they, they oh, you know, I don't get let, it. Let me put it this way. For okay. every time that, maybe my boss didn't have all the time in the world to yeah, keep breaking down. For every time you are picked up by a man, you are issued a ticket, you accumulate points. Okay. Do you get it? Mm. I mean, if I knew, if I have the privilege of coming the next time, I will come with the detailed offenses or take some very mm. critical offenses and the specific penalty point. Which my boss said, if you do 10 to 14, he said you get a warning. You do 15, your license is suspended. You do 21, it is withdrawn. Okay, let us pour, let us paint a scenario. Mm. I am driving. My license mm. has expired. Oh my God, I forgot it expired last week. That's one. Then also, I realized. Oh, I don't. I forgot my fire extinguisher. Mm. Then this road safety guy was just talking to me anyhow. So I shouted at him. Mm. If I, I think I slapped him a little, you tried. just a little slap. You tried. Then the fourth one. Um, mm. Let's see. I didn't have a spare tire. So have I? How much points do you think I've accumulated? Is it I'm, really? I'm sure your your cup is full already. <sighs> Your cup is complete. No, no. Because apart from what you will have accumulated, you have just exposed yourself to unnecessary risk. You don't have a spare tire is an offense. Okay. Driving without a spare tire, driving without a one, with, driving with a one out tire, is equally an offense. Now, besides being an offense, the victim is who you. Yes. That's number one. Now, in the event that there was an impact and fire resulted, you don't have a fire extinguisher. Remember always that, look, when it happens, it is Ceci who is in the vehicle, not Jonas Agu. Mm. It's your car that will get burnt. You lose it in the process in this economy right now. So you are the loser, not Jonas Agu. Mm. But I like what you said. I slapped the man a little bit. It's just a little. Yeah, we call it an assault, right? The assault could mean, so maybe it's safer for you to give him a good slap. So you know that when you are being charged to court, you will say, oh, but I meant this lab. Because if now you come to me and you said, oh, God, Jonas, this is an assault already. You don't touch my uniform. No, you don't. So in the name of that, my friend, I'm talking to you. That is an assault. Wow. So rather than you allow me punch for that assault, just tear the uniform. <laughs> And slap me with two hands, so you know that I have done my worst. I got punished me. <laughs> Look, I know that I don't slap you well. But we are saying, <laughs> when you do all of this, as the men sit there, you are saying, my friend, what is wrong with you? I know Jonas Agu is my friend. He said, okay, he's my guy. He gives you a ticket. Okay, uh, um, driver license. Ten thousand naira. No, of that is, it was just uh, two days ago that expired. Now remember, it's just two days ago. It couldn't kick. We look like we look. Oh, oh, okay, gentlemen, I want to travel to the U.S. tomorrow. My visa expired um, yesterday. <laughs> Immigration, no vex. If I get to America, I go tell <laughs> Mr. President, our, our uncle, President Biden, but say, Mickey, forgive me. <laughs> All he's saying to you is, which is why deliberately. We couch the license such that it will expire on your birthday. Mm. If that license expires a day before your birthday, the rule does not give you a 24 minutes grace period to say, now just at the processor. Mm. Technically, it's saying to you, you are not licensed to drive. So when do I start processing? If it's going to expire next week, should I, am I, should I start processing once it expires? Or yeah, you can start a month before. You can start two months before, a week before. And right now, I will say this. We have fine-tuned our process that if you apply for a driver's license, you are getting that license, the permanent one, between 24 hours, a week, or two weeks. Mm -hmm. So don't say, okay, it expires in January. Let me start in September. No. You can do that a week before, two weeks before, but just know that once it expires, you are 
Now, let me put, this is the kick here. Okay. It expired yesterday. You drove the car today. You knocked down a child. Mm. And a matter goes to court. They say, are you a licensed driver? They said, it expired yesterday. The court is going to treat you differently the way they will, the way they will have treated you if that license was valid. So if we have all of this in our mind, we say, you know what, this matter I'm joking with might end up in court. Might end up with a child who just suddenly just ran onto the road, was playing. And because I was not watching, I was there fiddling with my phone, I killed that child. Yeah. So it's important we know this. And you could end up in jail. Wow, okay, that's bad. So please, like we're discussing this matter, it's about life and death. What we're discussing this afternoon may look like they're jokes, serious matters, but remember that look, like the figure I gave, yeah. right? 200 and what figure did I give before now? Yeah. 248. Oh, uh, yes. It's died in FCT. Uh, in Niger, 207. And every Put it together, that's almost 500 lives. Okay, and that's really bad. Just in FCT and Niger State. So please, we plead with you. All right. I'm still pleading with you. I see all your messages. I'm Rota Ikom. Uh, thanks. I've learned a lot from this program. Me too. I'm learning to uh, please talk on the issue of cars overtaking. I'm down. Uh, I'm down. I'm Rachel from, uh, okay, Rachel from Nasarawa. My yeah. name is Gabriel Daniel. My problem is how people are parking the cars on the road anyhow. Mm. Okay, who else is here? My name is Onome. My comment is to say we should obey all signs. I'm from Delta State. Mm. Okay, um, you know what? Yeah, road signs are very, very important. I think if we manage to know our road signages and obey them, yeah. to a large extent, that figure of 200 or something is going to be, you know, half or even a little below half. So, and um, we figure actually... Figure of almost 500, though. Yes, almost for 500. just these two states. So FCT was 248. Niger 207. Okay, now that's about 500. You know yeah. what? Um, yeah, the road safety, the VIO, they all work together. So we have a chat with uh, one of the VIO official who actually took us through the ABC of some of these road signs. So we thought we could share it with you before we run up this program. Major type of road signs. We have the informative signs, signs that informs you on what to do. We have the regulatory signs or mandatory signs. We also have the warning signs, the last one. There's what we call, we have the IPDE in driving, IPDE. We have the I stand for identify. You have to identify these road signs as a defensive driver. Anytime you see them anywhere, you have to identify two or more. So that is for the I. Then we have the P, to predict. You have to predict when you know, if you're driving, you have to predict so many things. Maybe a child may just run into the road, hmm? or a, an animal may just run into the road. So you have to predict it, so that in case anything just happens, you know how to handle it. Then we have decide. You have to decide when to use all the signs, when to apply your brake, when to slow down, and when to stop, when to use your gear, when to change them, and when to accelerate. So these warning signs, we're going to start with warning signs. Number one is railway level crossing with gates. Number two is railway level crossing without gates. Then number three is countdown signs. General danger, number four. Crossroad, number five. T-junction from the left. T-junction from the right. T-junction ahead. Intersection with major road. Intersection with minor road. Then T and Y junction from the right, Y junction from the left, then Y junction ahead. Then we also have the garageway narrows, carriageway widens. We have the narrow bridge. Then we have the dangerous hills. Then we have the dangerous double bend to the right, dangerous double bend to the left. So we have the dangerous bend. This one is dangerous bend to the left. We have the pedestrian crossing. We have the children crossing. This one can be zebra crossing too. We have children crossing. Beware of children. That means you should slow down. Then we have the roundabout. We have the sleepy surface. This surface, maybe oil or water. Then this one is falling rocks. Then we have the men at work. 
when you get to this point, you have to slow down so that. Jonas, or guard driver. Did you hear the joke you just gave? What did he say? About the zebra and zebra crossing. That they say to you, you be zebra. <laughs> so the sign says zebra crossing. Exactly. You be human yeah, 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 so yeah. maybe we should ride ri riding behind a zebra one cross. cross you when they give way. <laughs> you know. Okay. Now, for many of the signs that yeah. she enumerated there, yeah. from your experience on the road, very briefly, how many of these do you think people actually even know? I mean. Do, do they even keep to the? Are this part of the reasons why we experience the high figure we just? Yeah, yeah. I, I believe strongly. I've always said that one of the reasons why we are where we are is because of um, what I call irresponsible driving behavior. Mm. Yeah. If you choose not to go and be properly trained, that for me is wrong. It means you just assume that the vehicle is a toy. Mm. I can maneuver. You know. Those of us who are Christian, blood of Jesus, we will plead blood of Jesus. The ones who do jazz will say, ah, from my place, oh, or this yes, she, you know. Before. So people have this mindset that, you know what, why should I waste my time? Uncle Jonas, uh, Jonas yes. um, we have just a few minutes to end this program now, but there are some messages I really would like us to take. In a few minutes. If Yes, a few minutes. Uh, Someone is asking me that they would really like to speak with you. I'm sorry you can't speak with me. Just send as many messages. People have a lot of questions for no, you. No, but you can give them my official number. Okay, I'll give them your official number. Yes. Or maybe I can bring you back on because there are still many areas we've not touched. This person says, my name is Daniel Ibile. I'm texting from Amadi Yama. Well, that's what I got, I yeah. Yeah, sounds like. Thank you, sir. I too drive wrong sometimes, but hmm. only on emergency. I told you it's emergency. I, I, I like the confession of that. So, but, so you're, you're my guy. You confessed. But what I hear me said mm. is true. Thank mm. you. Uh, thanks for the change. All right. Yeah. Okay, that's a. Uh, that's, from him, yeah. that's from him. Who there's, else? There's we, a second one. Yes, there is a second one. Okay, this person says... The guy that said, can you use your earpiece? Yes. I re okay, good. My name is Kocha from Lagos. I really need, need to know if it's cool where you drive with headphones instead of phone. It's, it's not cool to use your... Yeah. Let, let, let me put it this way, right? I am driving to work. Cecil is my um, bride-to-be. And then I have my earpiece on. And she just called and just said, sweetheart, babes, uh, uh, which one are they calling now, babes or sweetheart? Uh, honey pie. Uh, uh, sweetheart is fine. Uh, sweetheart is bad. Yeah. Okay, let me take babes. Okay, babes. Say, babes, how's they born? No, get it in now. Yes. How's they born? Yes. I have my earpiece on. How's they born? Instantly at that the point, like I am driving. Yeah. How's they born? Whether there's a vehicle in front of the truck, yeah. whether traffic light says stop, Whatever it is, I am going to disregard every, every of the rule. My mind is, Cecil must not, nothing must happen to her. Hmm. That's the danger because the two questions, they have a tie. That one says, I drive rough on the emergency. This one says, can I use an earpiece? The reason why the law says don't use your phone hmm. is because if you got the information and said, Mama just died on the wheels, Bad news would affect how you drive. But in the same way, if I was driving and they call my child, my boss, calls me and said, Jonas, congrats, you are taking over from me. Come to the office now. The excitement of taking over from my boss will make me disregard whether there's a child on the road plane, whether there's a whatever it is. So we are saying using your earpiece is wrong, is risky. Driving, like my brother confessed, on the emergency yeah. simply means you are saying, if it is Mama who is in the mug already, you want to join Mama. Okay. And we don't want you to join Mama. Yes, I really don't want you to join Mama because I would really <laughs> like us to actually do this again. And Jonas Sago, there are so many messages coming in and many mm -hmm. people are asking questions. Yeah. I really would like us to do this again because, you know, there is this two-way thing. People are really appreciating it and they are learning a lot from this. So I would like to have a last word with, from you if you can do that in 15 seconds. My last word is this. Remember that a road crash is someone's fault. Don't let that fault be yours. All right, all right. From me, please do well. For if you have picked anything from this program, please try to abide for, abide on it as you get to drive on the road. My name is Cecil Egbele, and this has been a medley show with Cecil. Let's do this again in seven days. Mm -hmm.